If you're not buying Honda and Yamaha, well, you're pretty much buying everything else. So is this Champion generator really the next better option? We'll take a look at this generator as compared to the Honda, and you can still pick this up today on Amazon or a tractor trailer supply for $450. We'll run them through some tests as far as weight checks. We'll do a sound check with load and no load. And then we'll also do a load test to see, well, which one of these comes out ahead or, you know, which one just performs better overall. As we take a look at the Champion and the Honda Generator, for the most part, they're actually the same with a manual choke and they're both being able to be paralleled. But if you are going to parallel the Champion Generator, you will need an adapter that kind of looks like this. And that is a little bit of additional money, about $150 depending. And so as we take a look at both the generators, really the only difference that comes on the Champion is it does come with this 12 volt socket that you won't get on the older style Honda. And as we take a look at the specs, they both run 2000 as far as their peak, but the Champion does have a little bit more as far as the rated watts and amps and also a larger fuel tank. And so we'll get our testing started and we'll start off with the empty weight first. Neither one of the generators have gasoline in it. They've been ran out and so basically the only thing in it is the oil. So this is going to be at least the everyday weight. And then after you add fuel, you will add a couple more pounds on top of that. So as you can see, 47.4 pounds for the Honda. And as we throw the Champion on there, it's actually pretty impressive at how light it is. Coming in at under 40 pounds. That's, well, you know, seven pounds difference right there. And, and believe it or not, it does make a difference when you're carrying an extra seven pounds around. So as we go ahead and we take a look at when you're storing these generators, I like to store mine in the front compartment of my RV. It sits basically right there, right next to my Outland fire pit. This is a great fire pit. If you guys haven't seen one of these before, I'll leave a link down below so you can check it out, get a little more information. Anyway, but when it comes to moving the Champion generator in and out of this little spot, it's, it's relatively easy. It's light. And when you pick up the Honda, not that it's really a lot heavier, but you can tell. So when you move it in and out of this little compartment, being that it is a little bit longer, it, it does take up a little more space and the weight is, you know, noticeable. So it might be just something to consider. So we'll go ahead and we'll get our testing started as far as our sound check goes. Both of these generators will start with the eco mode off and at 23 feet away. And one thing that I do have with the Honda here it is a used unit, but that little fuel cap kind of rattles. So I'm going to put something and kind of wedge it in there to get rid of that noise. So we'll start off the sound check with the eco mode off. We'll take a look and kind of get an average real quick. So after letting the generator run for just a little bit and doing this a few times, it basically came out to about 72 decibels. We'll go ahead and we'll turn on that eco mode now and see how much farther it drops. And so again, at 23 feet away, we kind of look at it. Now we're way down into the low 60s, almost in the 50s. But so after letting this run and doing this test a couple times, pretty much came out to about 60 to 61. So I pretty much ran about 60.5 as far as that test went. And now if I turn this generator sideways and I kind of aim that exhaust kind of down the little hallway of my backyard there, you can see it even drops it more. And some people were wondering actually about the walls and the fence and everything. Well, both of these generators are playing in the same court under the same test. So it really is just a good reference to see basically which one of these is quieter and, and kind of the decibel levels that they run. So we'll do the same test again with the Champion. We'll go ahead and let that run for a few seconds and then we'll kind of let it average out. And I want you guys to pay attention to these numbers too because later on we're going to do a full load test and also check out the sound levels. And you guys might be surprised at what happens later. It is kind of impressive. So, And so now with the eco mode on on the Champion, we'll go ahead and let that run for just a little bit. We'll let that get an average. And you can see it's running actually pretty close to where the Honda was. So. After letting it run for a little bit and getting a few averages on this thing, it came out to right about 61, so still pretty impressive for a $500 generator, basically. So we'll go ahead and we'll turn the exhaust sideways again, and we'll let that run for a little bit. And if we take a look at those numbers, they're actually pretty impressive, doing pretty good in those kind of mid-upper 50s. And after letting it run for a few times, it actually came out just a little bit less than a Honda, so kind of won on that battle. So we'll go ahead and do the load test real quick. And so we're gonna start off with the Honda. And you can see the starting voltage there is 127.3 volts. And I'm gonna set up a little meter here so we can watch everything in real time. So we're gonna be using my trailer to do the testing. And this is a 30 amp service trailer with a 15K AC unit on it. And this generator will not run that AC unit just as a heads up. 
So we'll take a look at the battery monitor. You can see the battery is full, the converter's on. That's what that 0 0.3, 0 0.4 amps is. Um, it's basically charging the battery and you can actually save a little power by turning that off and I'll kind of explain that in a minute. But we'll start off the test by turning on the microwave and this is gonna draw about, well, 11, 11 and a half amps. And then you can see that the generator has a little green light on right there in the left upper corner. And then you can see we're at 123 volts, so everything is looking good. And so we're going to turn on this little 350 watt heater, and you'll see the amps are going to come up about 4 amps. But then when this heater gets warm, it lives at right about 3, and it's about 350 watts. And these things are great. I'll put a link in the description if you haven't seen one before. Great little heater to have in your RV. You can run one in your bedroom and one in the bathroom. Great item to have. So we'll go around, we'll look for some more power. And we're gonna basically go to this 1500 watt heater over here and we can turn this on in three stages. So we're just gonna turn it on slow. And so remember this generator only runs 13.3 amps is kind of where it's supposed to live, but it can run a max load for about 20 minutes according to the manual. So we're gonna turn it up a little bit more and kick it off. And then I'm gonna do another test to kind of show you guys a little bit something different with the Honda because it is actually impressive is what it does when you kind of sneak the loads up on it. And so you can see that it kind of kicks off and basically everything shuts off. So we're going to go turn the generator back on real quick. We'll go reset that and start over. Now I want you guys to see what happens when we do the loads a little bit differently. So we're going to start off with this heater first again. We'll let this guy go. And again, um, I want you to pay attention to the amps and also the voltage as we get kind of going here. And then also we are going to do another sound check just so you can see how loud these are when they are at pretty much, you know, max capacity. So we'll go ahead and turn on the heater the first notch there, kind of let that equalize for a minute. And then we'll go ahead and let's just turn it on another notch. So now you can hear the generator kind of really kicking up, starting to use some power. And we're still well under what the rate it is, so we're doing good. So now we'll find some other items to go ahead and start turning on. And let's say we want to save some propane and, and turn the refrigerator on the AC side. So we'll go ahead and turn that on and save a little bit of propane and, and that's going to kick on and burn about another two amps so it takes about five to ten seconds for that thing to go and now what we're going to do is we're going to start kind of turning on some power to get that converter going and that converter is going to start charging the battery but you can shut this off like say you're running solar because a lot of these trailers come equipped with it you can run your solar and have like a charger controller like this and, and that's a great charger i'll put a link in there for that but that can save you a little bit of power so you're just running off your battery only and not having that converter working so and that can save you two two and a half maybe three amps depending on how much you're working it okay we'll turn on max power on the heater now so that's 1500 watts there plus the 350 watts we got going in the back we also have a couple hundred watts on the refrigerator. And so as you see right there, we're at 2000 watts over, um, you know, basically we're over our rated load, we're over our rated amps, and the voltage still looks good though, so we're still okay. As long as that voltage doesn't get too low, that's kind of what we're worried about is, is severe voltage drop. And so we'll just kind of keep an eye on that as we go. But, um, and as you kind of look at the load that's presented right now and then also look at that little green light you don't even see the overload light flickering yet so here's a little switch that I installed on my stereo because when I'm out dry camping I don't want this thing drawing a half an amp overnight while I'm not using it so I put the switch on saves a half an amp and you'd be surprised when you're out dry camping and if it's cloudy that's battery power that's kind of being sucked away so and we look around get some more stuff to turn on actually what we're gonna do is we'll go outside here real quick and turn on some more stuff and then we're gonna do that sound check and I want you guys to pay attention to those numbers because we're gonna do the same thing to the champion okay so we're gonna get a little bit more power here with this outside fan that I have and this is just a 150 watts so we'll turn that on as well and again if you're paying attention to the generator the monitor over there and you're looking at that voltage most of the other generators shut off by now. 112, 110 volts, they're done because you know if you are charging or, or doing more sensitive electronics, you don't want that to kind of go down there. I kind of wish I had a Hertz meter and and also a, a pure sine wave meter to kind of see what's going on with the harmonic on this thing or as far as our total harmonic distortion. That's what they talk about: five percent, three percent, you know, total harmonic distortion. We don't want it to vary too much because that's when we can start seeing damage to those sensitive electronics. As we do a sound check, you can see this guy's running about 74 and a half dB as it kind of screams away at full load. And we're pretty much done with this test and we're going to move on to the Champion. There's no reason to continue running this. I've done this before and it's just kind of odd how the 
Honda just kind of keeps going. So we're going to basically get that champion ready and shut everything down here and reset. And now as we look at the champion, I have to use this 15 amp adapter versus this is an L530R adapter for kind of a twist lock plug. And that one's capable of 30 amps. And not that it really makes a difference, but just to kind of give you a heads up on the test. So as we take a look at the voltage, the other one was 127, this is 122, but yeah, that's where most of them come out. The Predator, AI Power, the wind generators are all about 122 to 123, 124. So we'll go ahead and reset everything, start over, kind of go back and do the same test. So we're going to come back here to the microwave again, do the same thing. That way we can compare exactly what we did with the Honda. So we'll let that run up real quick and you can hear the generator start kicking on. And both of these are on eco mode, just so you guys know, because that's about how 95% of the people run them. They, they fire them up, they turn them on eco mode and never look back. So I figured I'd give you some real world testing on how everybody uses them and, uh, you know, just kind of go from there. So, so now you can see we're well above our rated uh, amperage and you can see the red light is on on the generator and it's still running and still going and our voltage still looks fine. So we'll go ahead and just kind of kick this to the next notch, get this test a little bit, you know, moving along. And this is going to kick off and the generator pretty much says, uh, I don't know what you're doing, but don't like it. So it shuts off. And this is kind of a nice little feature of the Champion is that all you have to do to reset it is to come under here and basically press that little button and boom, away you go. And you want to make sure you turn everything off. You don't want to have a, a load on it. But uh, yeah, it's a nice feature versus a Honda. You do have to shut it all the way off and turn it back on. Hey, it's not too big of a deal, but... So we'll go ahead and start off with a little heater again. You can see this guy will kick up to about four amps and come back down to about three here in a minute. We do have the converter still on, which charges the battery. So now we're gonna go ahead and go back here to the heater again. We'll just use this guy. And now you can hear the generator kicking up a little bit more. And we'll find some other things that go ahead and turn on. So let's go, actually let's just turn on this heater and get this test kind of underway. We'll get that up a little bit higher let that kind of equalize out real quick and we'll go ahead and start turning on some stuff again kind of like uh, we'll turn on the fan and the light get the converter running because we'll kind of do the same type of test to sneak that power up on the generator and see how far it goes and so we'll go ahead and turn on some more stuff turn on more lights turn on the fan again get that converter running about three or so amps and might as well just go ahead and turn on the heater all the way. So we'll get that guy going. And so now you can see the red light is on, on the generator. And we're running about 15.6 on the amps. And while we're here at a full load, we'll go ahead and do a sound check as well. And as we do a sound check of full load, you remember what the Honda was, it was running about 74 and a half dB. And now that we're outside and this guy's running, it's also just a little bit quieter at max load. So another interesting item, I thought. So we'll go ahead and turn on the outside fan again. Keep kind of sneaking the power up and see how far we go. Remember we're rated at 1700 watts at 14.4 amps and we're far exceeding it. So and then we'll kind of see where the, uh, where the generator goes as far as the fridge. And we'll turn this on. And so the generator pretty much says that's about it. I'm done. So we'll kind of recap here real quick. If you want to buy the Honda generator, you're going to be buying this particular model used. And it runs anywhere from 500 to 750 used. And when they are in good condition, they do sell fast. But you can, you can buy the new model at $1,150, which is you know, pretty high, but they do have a real tremendous amount of reliability, but you can get a three-year warranty at only $450 for the Champion Generator, which is pretty good being that it's lighter, it's quieter, it's cheaper, and it does have a longer runtime with, you know, the bigger fuel cell. So it is something to consider. So let me know your thoughts in your comments down below, and I hope you guys did like the video. Make sure